Well, honestly, I didn't realize it was a heart attack. I just felt like I was about to faint. I felt faint, you know. I told my son, and he said, well, he felt like we needed to call EMS, which we did. Once we got to the ER, everything just went like clockwork. Time is muscle. Speed is critical. You have to have an EKG within the first 10 minutes. Door to balloon, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. My name is Joe Holly, and I live in Greenwood, and I work at um, Lakeview Elementary with kindergarten. I have one son. I'm divorced. Um, I've lived in Greenwood most of my life. I came when I, I lived at County Maxwell before I started, you know, before I got married. So Greenwood's more like my hometown. When the EMS is activated for someone who's potentially having a heart attack, um, they'll come to the house um, with lights and sirens on. The concern is that you are having a heart attack. Um, the first thing they do when they get to your home is they're going to do a full assessment. They're going to ask you some history, um, what's hurting. If you're taught, tell them you have chest pain, they're going to start down a specific guideline chest pain protocol. Um, part of that protocol is going to be to do an EKG. The really cool thing about getting an EKG done in this manner is that as soon as the medic sees that EKG, they are all trained to recognize a heart attack on a EKG tracing. I do remember a lot of it. They, they would ask you questions, you know, about um, how I felt, how old I was, my birthday. Um, like I said, they, they were very um, helpful, you know, because I think they were taking an EKG and they were sending everything, I think, to the emergency room. And like I said, I, I, I am indebted to them mostly because they were so quick and fast in everything that they did. You know, they were very efficient. They immediately call us in the ER, let us know that we have a patient in the field who's having a heart attack. That allows us to go ahead and start the process. We can go ahead and activate the cath lab. They're on the way in. We call the cardiologist. They're on the way in. Uh, what this does is it speeds the process to get you seen quicker, which is what our goal is to get you to the cath lab as quick as we can to get the artery open back up in your heart. It was just like one, two, three, and you were in and out. There was no delay. There was no hesitant. I mean, everybody knew exactly what to do and when to do it. The foundation was great when they helped us to purchase the CarePoint uh, system that we're using currently in our emergency department. The CarePoint system is a, a way that EMS can safely and securely transmit an EKG to the emergency department for the emergency department physician to read the EKG um, real live before the patient arrives here. So when you have that EKG done at your house, that the EMS folks can immediately send us the EKG in the ER and you have a physician reading your EKG and we can make some decisions on the point right then. Another great initiative that our hospital is currently doing is that we are uh, helping provide AEDs to our communities. An AED is an automatic external defibrillator that is used by the general public and serves as a first responder for those people who are having a cardiac event out in the community. For the last two years, um, our hospital has been providing them to select areas where there are high volumes or potential volumes of people that could be having a heart attack. AEDs are fantastic in that if someone is having a heart attack to the point to where their heart stops, an AED can be life-saving. Um, they're self-explanatory on how to use, um, even for a layperson. Uh, it will walk you through the process of how to apply the AED and when to shock somebody and when not to shock somebody just by pushing the button the machine tells you what to do. Uh, so it's a great service to our community and AEDs do save lives. Once the cath lab team arrives after they've been called in, they will call the emergency care center and tell them that they're ready for the patient. The emergency care center nurse and one other person will transport that patient to the cath lab on a monitor. And once they arrive in the cath lab, then the table, our 
table is set up and we're ready for the patient. We prep the patient, put the patient on the table. The physician is already here. So we're ready to start once that patient arrives here. I would have assessed the patient in the emergency room and from the EKG already have an idea where the blockage is going to be. Then we start the procedure, we get a, um, access to the heart either through the um, artery at the wrist or the artery in the groin, most often through the wrist as it's more comfortable for the patient. Once we get to the heart, we quickly get x-ray pictures um, and confirm where the blockage is and then we start working on the blockage and um, very quickly we will have the artery open with a balloon angioplasty and quickly followed by um, stent placement and um, by then usually the patient's pain is mostly relieved and um, the patient uh, becomes stable. Once the vessel is opened by balloon or stent, the clock will stop. The physician will then finish the procedure. The patient will be transported to our cardiac intensive care unit where they'll be monitored overnight. Medication administration will be managed and they will more than likely be discharged the next day. Prior to discharge, they will be referred to cardiac rehab. Um, I think part of the part of your um, procedure of getting better is that they do um, prescribe cardio rehab. They're very good about uh, checking you and, and encouraging you, and, and they've encouraged me to like to push myself a little bit farther. You know, you, you've done this. Can you do you think you can go another step? You know, and. You know, and it makes you want to. And like I said, once you start feeling better, you do want to do more. My name is Dr. Claudio Grace, can one of the heart surgeons here at Self Regional Healthcare. I've been here for the past 15 years. I was here since uh, the beginning of this program. And uh, what I do, uh, I do heart surgery. When patient comes and see me, particularly if they, 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 they need to see me on a kind of an urgent or emergency situation, I realize uh, quite often that I see people that they are very afraid. Okay? They just discovered that they have a, a potentially deadly disease and uh, they don't know where their life is going to go from there. They're not gonna, they don't know if they're going to survive. They don't know if they're going to be the same people, I mean the same person. And that's uh, particularly when I have to, to, to treat a young, uh, young male. Okay? There is a lot of concerns and uh, one of the things that we do that I think we're, we do particularly well here is uh, to reassure these people that uh, actually it's not the end of the road but it's, uh, it's the beginning of a new chapter in life okay and uh, we can that we can take care of their disease very effectively and uh, we can restore their health uh, to to probably better than what it was uh, at the time that it came in I want to sincerely thank the foundation and all of the donors to the foundation for allowing us to provide this service at our hospital. I really feel like this is making a huge difference for the patients in our community. We would really like to thank the donors to the foundation for helping us provide these life-saving therapies to the community. I would like to thank the foundation and uh, the generosity of all the donors that contribute to the foundation that makes all this possible. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Cardiovascular Service Line, I would like to thank the Self Regional Healthcare Foundation for their generous donations. Yeah, I'm indebted to them, I really am. It just means I can't even comprehend or even put into words the appreciation that what it means to me, that I'm, that I'm a better person because they have helped me literally to, to live a better life. It means so much to me that they've They've helped me, you know. I, I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for them. Well, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them.